Well, knowing how to do CPR is a skill that can save a person you love, especially because a majority of out-of-hospital cardiac arrests happen in homes. And here to talk about the importance of CPR training is Dustin Hadley, a paramedic and a survivor of cardiac arrest who was saved by CPR. Thanks for being here. We really mm -hmm. appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. This is super important. Let's start a little bit about with your story and what happened to you. Yeah, I had finished a half marathon and collapsed, had all sorts of people around me, and everybody was afraid to start CPR. And I actually had to wait for a uh, physician from Abbott to cross the finish line to start CPR. And they did great after that. They followed right. the chain of survival perfectly. But that's why it's so important for other people to learn or to not be scared to try, uh, because you're mm -hmm. saying it really changes the chances of survival, right? Very much so. CPR by itself uh, can approximately double person's survival rate, and the use of an AED, you're looking at around triple. And let's talk about AEDs. It's something we're seeing on the table right yep. here. So this is something that you would find maybe in a business, probably not in your house, but maybe in a business? Correct. Yep, and there are some that are more publicly posted and available, and uh, even some apps are letting uh, public service agencies know where available AEDs are to use on somebody uh, out in the open. And this is something that really kind of takes the guesswork out of it. If you've never done it before, it really prompts you on how to, to, how to save someone's life. Absolutely, and they are completely safe. It's not going to shock if they don't need it. Right. And so one thing that I just learned before this segment started, about 50% mm -hmm. of people don't know where the AEDs are in their building, and I have to right. admit, I'm one of them. I know we have the signs up, but I mm -hmm. don't know where the AEDs are. Yeah, I'm going to get yelled at after this. <laughs> no. yeah, not for me, but yeah. take okay. some time and find out, and at least uh, everybody should have an idea of where they are. And what's your recommendation for getting trained? Uh, you at least need bystander training. Okay. I don't need everybody to go through certification and uh, have their card. I, uh, bad CPR from somebody that's just learned from a uh, uh, either in high school now that it's required or mm -hmm. from um, many impromptu trainings that American Heart, for example, will put on, will cover the basics and not even include the breathing if somebody's uncomfortable with that. And so you can, uh, you really essentially get it from a lot of places. You can get that training from there a lot of different places. many opportunities. I'm usually training uh, four or five times a year, and some of my fellow survivors are training multiple times a week. Well, this is fantastic information. I know it can be a super scary experience, uh, if, especially if you don't know what to do. And I've had that happen to me before, too, where you see someone go down and you're you feel helpless. Definitely. So this is a way to not feel helpless and also to, to maybe save someone's life. Yep, and uh, keep them alive until uh, uh, emergency services can get there. Yeah, because you were talking about several minutes at some, some point. So they get yeah. there as fast as they possibly can. Of but, course. But that really yeah. makes a difference. Well, thank you, Dustin. We really appreciate uh, your time, and we're glad you're here to tell us all about it, right? <laughs> so am I. Uh, thank you right. so much. Well, if you'd like more information uh, about anything that Dustin touched on here, head to care11.com and look under our 4 o'clock show page. We'll be right back.